And uh, now to our next conversation. The Nigerian Exchange turned 60 last week and started the uh, conversation around uh, that during capital uh, market on Saturday. I will take it further with the Chief Executive Officer of the NGX, uh, Mr. Temi Kukwola. Uh, great to have you on the program. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Thanks Fine. for having me. Fine. Thank you. So Nigerian Exchange Group began as uh, the Lagos Stock Exchange with the first day of trading being uh, 25th of August uh, 1961 with 19 securities to over uh, 300 securities now. How would you describe this 60-year uh, journey? Uh, I think, you know, uh, as to any sort of subject, that uh, let me just ask you to forgive my voice, uh, struggling with a little bit of a cold. That's fine. Uh, but with any uh, subject like this, where you have an opportunity to look back in time 60 years, uh, indeed, if you look at our nation, uh, there are a few companies uh, that have that sort of history and legacy. Uh, so perhaps the way I think about this moment is from two lenses, really. One is just the heritage, I would say, that you know comes with uh, this richness of this time. And the other is the history. Um, if you think about the heritage, I would say that when you think about the norms, uh, what I'll call the traditions, and just the general approach to financing and to capital markets that we have as a nation, it's very difficult to divorce the exchange from that uh, set of norms and beliefs. So I think that's a testament in itself. Uh, and then, of course, the history, 60 years uh, as an institution. Uh, in that time, there's been quite a few cycles that we have witnessed. Uh, but to your point, there's a very strong track of growth, uh, whether that's growth to the number of securities listed, to the types of securities listed and the types of business activity that the institution does. I think it's only a time that gives us, again, this pause to look back in time and to be thankful uh, for all of this. Thirty exchanges in Africa. Nigeria ranks about third after Kenya and South Africa. What can we adopt from these two exchanges? Okay, maybe I should ask you to please clarify when you say it ranks third. Third in terms of what, please? Uh, I mean, even recently, Kenya was applauded as the leading exchange on the continent, and then okay. and then South Africa. Yes. Okay, thank you for that question. Uh, you know, there are several things through which you can look at exchanges. Um, and I wasn't quite sure what you meant. Uh, traditionally, you would look at what is the market capitalization, for example, in the exchange, which would throw up a different kind of ranking. Uh, and there is a host of other things that you can look at. But I'll try to address the question, really, if it's around what can we as an institution perhaps adopt as we look around us in the continent, as we look around us outside Africa uh, to other leading exchanges. Uh, I would say that really it's to continue to build on what it is that we have at the moment. And those are things around just increasing access to, uh, call it financial uh, sort of exposure for citizens of the country. It is the ability to help corporates to help the government to uh, meet a lot more of their objectives. Uh, but by and large, I think that the exchange and GX, uh, if you look particularly across Africa, uh, certainly stands tall, I would say, across most of the exchanges vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the current dynamics of the nation. All right, so in recent times, we've seen a change in the composition of investors from being majorly foreign to uh, domestic. What advantages come with this? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, I think it, it, it's a, a testament to what is the call it financial power of Nigeria as a whole. Uh, to your point, the specific numbers are around somewhere from 60% of what used to be a foreign investor participation in our core equity markets to what is now about 20%. Uh, I need to see, of course, that this figure can be very cyclical foreign investors will typically move with what I call the ebb and the flow of capital across particularly frontier markets. And that's what that current trend shows at this point. In time. Uh, but one of the things that this demonstrates is that there's been a lot more, uh, you know, sort of a breadth to the type 
of local investors that we see in our market. Historically, you saw just the uh, institutional investors. Uh, today, on the local side, you're seeing more retail investors. You're seeing more family offices uh, do business uh, on the exchange. And indeed, you're seeing more corporates, even though they're local corporates, uh, is what makes up a lot of this. So for us as an exchange, is really to ask ourselves how we can build on this local increased participation, but at the same time, make sure that as the cyclicality of the foreign capital continues, we are positioned to attract that when some of the, uh, I would say, macroeconomic type situations uh, improve. And uh, the demutualization of the exchange has been described as a major leap in the right direction. Is it too soon to counter benefits? Uh, I don't think it's too soon, actually, because um, first and foremost is the fact that the demutualization was several years and perhaps decades in the making. And I think for the benefit of the viewers, the simple way to think about the demutualization is that it essentially allows the exchange, uh, which now uh, you can call it made up of three, four companies. Uh, what you would find is that the sum of the individual parts of these companies will be bigger than the whole. Uh, so when you look at the core operating exchange today, uh, that will now have a much higher commercial focus and ethos, the ability to separate that intention from the other very important responsibility of regulating the market, then I think would help to achieve what is this uh, sort of uh, reason for the demutualization. And then of course, tied to that is the ability to attract new partners, whether those are strategic partners, whether they're financial partners, uh, really to help the exchange achieve a lot of its long-term goals and objectives. All right, the, the issue of base of the NGX, you know, has been described as being uh, too narrow and uh, concentrated, like, you know, seven companies control about 70% of the market cap. Uh, any plans to expand the base? Okay, uh, it's a good question. Uh, I think first and foremost, I should say that if you look at any business, if you look at any sector, you will typically have what is your 80-20 role, which is that there's typically 20%, you know, that tends to control 80% of the activity. Uh, so I think that's what you're speaking to around the exchange. Uh, but nonetheless, it is indeed true that, that we can do a lot more to diversify uh, what appears to be a core, uh, you know, set of companies that account for the market cap of the exchange. And yes, we are actively working on this. I think as time goes on, you would find this to be uh, a lot of the investments that we're making as an institution to try to address this. Uh, and a few sectors, uh, in my view, are pretty apparent that we need to uh, sort of put a lot more emphasis on. If we look within technology today, we will see a lot of capital formation happening uh, as a and indeed, it's one of the very bright spots today uh, for us in the sort of capital markets and financing uh, part of the nation. So the exchange would be spending quite a bit of time and energy to situate itself uh, within this ecosystem. Uh, and then, of course, the other way to think about this question is to just think through uh, one of the things that make up the GDP of the nation. Uh, and what parts of those are not sufficiently represented on the exchange. Uh, Agric will be perhaps a notable example of that on top of the technology I mentioned. And of course, things like real estate. Uh, but the approach and the path to getting these represented uh, requires certain different types of strategies for each sector. But I can say that this is certainly top of mind share priority for the management as we go forward. All right, and uh, what are the plans to digitalize the market to a point where investors can buy and sell shares easily? You know, talking about mobile platforms, because a lot of people have talked about the bureaucracy or the long process to actually access shares. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a very good question. I thank you for raising it. In fact, you'd find that it's sometimes easier as a local Nigerian with a local bank account to get exposure to foreign securities than it is to get exposure to Nigerian equities. Uh, in Nigeria, I call it financial products. Um, I would first of all start to say that you know the apex regulator uh, is taking a very, very strong lead in trying to address this question. 
uh, and the exchange is certainly also partnering to the extent that we can to make sure we support this initiative. Uh, and another simple way to think about the objective there is that similar to the banking system, where you can in the space of minutes start to transact in a financial sort of bank account, what would it take for the capital market to get to this sort of a place? And uh, I would say that a lot of work is being done on this. Of course, as you would imagine, if you understand the way that the, the, the structural makeup of our markets is that there's several people and several institutions uh, that are involved with that process from start to finish of, you know, trying to transact. And that sort of coordinating effort is certainly important. The exchange is doing its bit in that. As I said, the regulator uh, is also taking a lead in this. Uh, and I think certainly I can say that over the course of the next few months, we are hopeful that we will see some really, in my view, structural changes in the positive direction that helps to address this. Because until we can do this, uh, and if you think about also the makeup of the Nigerian sort of demography, uh, most of the next generation of investors are typically on their mobile phones. And until we can meet them there uh, with a sort of product, uh, then we still have a lot to do, which is uh, a lot of the activity that's going on at the moment. All right. In terms of uh, policy making, you know, which affects activities on the market, what are some of the key reforms you believe uh, industry practitioners are looking out for, and how can the NGX, you know, facilitate uh, some of these? Thank you again for the question. I, I think there, there are a few ways to look at this. Uh, there, if you think about just the core activity of the exchange today, we are in the listing business, which is how do we get corporates uh, to raise capital through investors on the exchange. And then, of course, there's the college trading part of that, the secondary part of that, uh, how we provide enough liquidity and opportunity for investors to transact and trade on their shares and securities. Uh, and if you think about policy, uh, there's a lot of policy work that is needed for both of these what I call core traditional pillars. Um, so, for example, we look at the primary market activity. Uh, many people will tell you that perhaps our listing rules, perhaps need to be revisited, perhaps now also, and particularly now after the demutualization. So there's going to be a lot of policy work to be done there to really ask ourselves, um, you know, now in sort of the way capital is being formed, are there rules, that are there changes to our rules that can be done? Uh, if you think through on the secondary part of the activity as well, uh, there are lots of policy related things. One we just spoke about uh, to really unlock through technology and you know do this democratization of finance. It does involve quite a lot of policy changes that the exchange will be looking to champion. Uh, and then of course, away from all of these, uh, what I call more macroeconomic type policies that are not necessarily in the direct control of the exchange that will be working with you know all the regulators and working with lawmakers around this would be everything from tax policy uh to things around more macroeconomic variables that again the exchange is not in control of but certainly will be doing its part to um, uh, smooth in and to make sure that we get across the line all right uh, mr Popola, just before we let you go what's the plan to boost uh, or attract more foreign capital into the exchange Okay. Uh, this is certainly uh, goes back to the point I made. There are certain things in this that are within the control of the exchange, uh, but also fair to say that there's quite a bit also that's outside the control of the exchange when we talk about attracting foreign capital. Uh, first and foremost, the way foreign capital flows is that it does not like resistance. I'm sure most people would appreciate that. And also is that capital is very fungible. Uh, so a lot of the foreign capital that comes in really starts from what I call a top-down sort of analysis. They would sort of look at the region, look at the continent, look at the country, and decide to allocate capital. So those sorts of decisions tend to be more around the economy, broadly speaking. Uh, but away from that, of course, investors also look at the quality of the companies and the quality of the investments that they could make. 
this is the reason why you would find that the exchange is very big on governance, as an example, and upholding the laws and the rules and the regulations that govern the activity on the exchange. And then, of course, there are more operational things. When investors transact in our markets, how easy is it for them to settle transactions? How easy is it for them for uh, sort of complaints and issues to be resolved? Uh, and how do they find what I call the infrastructure in our market, the intermediaries, uh, the custodians is an example that many of them will transact through. These are things that are within the exchange's control, and we are spending quite a bit of time to make sure that we make all of that conducive uh, enough. But important to say, as I said earlier, uh, that a lot of the time, the overwhelming sort of factor as to attracting foreign capital tends to be more macroeconomic in nature. Uh, so uh, while we celebrate the 60 years, what's the outlook for the next 60 years? Let's say 60 years. <laughs> 60 years or 60 days? Uh, <laughs> I, I think that question certainly is one of the sort of questions that gets me very excited as I think about the future of the exchange. Uh, I spoke earlier, for example, to technology. It is very exciting what is happening within the technological space within Nigeria as an example. So I think no one really can sort of... Uh, uh, wrap our minds around what that would look like in 60 years. But one thing I can tell you is that in 60 years from now, you are having an institution where, you know, just the, the, the idea of raising capital through shares is just one part of what we will be doing. Uh, there would be several other forms and means and ways of raising capital. And the exchange of the future certainly will continue to evolve and will continue to innovate to make sure that we can attract that. Uh, of course, I should also state that the exchange itself is a company. Uh, and so the exchange of the future is a company that, you know, colleagues and employees should find to be a worthy place to work, to build a career, uh, to grow. Uh, and ultimately, it should be an institution that really does help to drive what we see as the uh, so economic growth in Nigeria, uh, we do think very strongly so that the future uh, economic growth of the nation is very tied to the success of the capital markets. And it's our responsibility as the exchange to make sure that the capital markets are strong, that they're vibrant and uh, on very strong uh, foundations. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Temi Pupola, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Exchange Group. And congratulations. We certainly Look forward to the next 60 years uh, in good health yeah. and uh, more celebrations. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Cheers.